Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel, tech lead and partner at Westfall. And today I want to talk about how to code PHP like a pro, like a seasoned developer and someone who does it for a living. That means some of the best practices and some of the tips and tricks using the E2 framework. Now, I got this idea, actually I had it in my mind for a while, but I got this command from one of my viewers, Jules, who said I, he doesn't know the difference between a beginner PHP developer and someone who's been coding for 10 years. He can't tell the difference between the two. Now, this is what uh, today's video will be about. I will actually go through how you can improve your PHP coding skills with a live example that I found on the E2 forum. And this example was provided by Mike Saunders, okay? So before I begin, I wanna make some caveats about uh, this code and best practice. The first point about this is that tech leads or senior developers or whoever it is, or if even if you work at the FANG, do not have a monopoly over good ideas. Think of best practices as just the current idea that is better in the market. No one has come down, no one died and make me the, um, the authority on what is a best practice. It's simply something like putting on your pants one leg at a time. Yes, you could do it two legs at a time, but most people are gonna struggle, trip and fall, and it's gonna be a disaster. And over time, we figured out that one leg at a time is a good idea. So how are we gonna do this? Is that I'm gonna go through the, um, his code that he set up, his, his example, and I'm gonna also give you three software development philosophies that I myself use to keep my code looking good. Now, these again, I, nothing should stop you from going out and coding. Remember, this is an agile process. Go out, code, get feedback, improve. Don't let anybody else, be it C++ guys or Java or someone on top and say, look, I know better than you, blah, blah, blah. As long as you're learning and improving, I think you're gonna do well. So these are the three philosophies I want you to think about when you're coding. And these are the guidelines of philosophies to improve on. The first one, is keep it simple silly so all things being equal try to make your code as simple as possible simple named variables simple lines of code simple uh, amounts of uh, methods use whatever is simple now that doesn't make it make it short and concise make it easy to understand so that's the first philosophy Keep thinking about that. The second philosophy is one that I practice all the time. Less is more. If you can do less, that's better. Okay, this means less code, less comments, less descriptions, less plugins, all that kind of stuff. I call it the Maria Kondo of coding. So this philosophy we will see happening uh, later when we code this example up. And the final one, is use what you got first. Use what you got. So if you start an application, right, try to look inside the framework, inside whatever code that you have, inside the language for a solution first before you start digging outside. And when you start digging outside, try to say, okay, can I use a plugin approved by the framework? Can I use, can I custom a little bit of a plugin to do that before you start getting further and further and further away until you go into a different language or a different system or another server or even another uh, SaaS product that you're having to use. Try to use it, uh, use what you got first. This principle will keep things nice and tight, will make sure that your code stays together. So going with these three philosophies, I'm now gonna jump in and do some real coding right now. I'll put them on the top here and uh, let's get to it. Okay, so this is the example on the E2 forum. This is provided by Mike. Thanks very much. Um, so what Mike is trying to do here is that he's got two tables, a user table and a photo table. And he basically wants to display a photo, a random photo of 
the user. So here there are two tables. Um, I'm going to go ahead and assume that uh, photos is a one-to-many relationship. So one user has many uh, photos and any one of them could be displayed at uh, one time. Um, and because if it was just a one-to-one, -one, I would just recommend just putting it all in one table. So just looking at the code here, there's a few comments I want to make. First is the uh, doing a raw SQL query. So in Yi2, the idea is don't do raw queries. This is principle number three, which is use what you got. And what we got there, right, is the Yi2 model class. It's a very powerful data model class. So here we have the raw query. Uh, you don't need to use this. Uh, at the bottom, you can actually see he's also used a view display. So again, principle number three, use the view class in E2. So use what you've got. Now, uh, what we're going to do is going to clean this up. And the first thing we do is just write down and draw it out your relationships. So we have photos, we have users. And photos are a one-to-many relationship, so they are related. Um, what now we're going to do is we're going to jump into Beacon. This is my existing project that we have over here at West Vault. And I'm going to be able to uh, just code down here. Since I'm going to be coding, I might as well make use of the code for my own functionality. Now, Beacon has been set up as a E2 project. This means it's hooked up to the database. Um, it's been compiled with a couple of controllers and views. Uh, you can see there we have mailing address, users, and properties. You can just find the simple tutorial to set up the E2 application. I won't be going through that today. Just assume out of the box, you're probably going to get this with the, uh, with the controller and the site controller. And then we can start uh, running our code from here. Now, all Bacon has is a user table that allows me to log in and some user data that we will be actually working with. Remember, one of the hard parts is actually generating some dummy data so that you can work with your database. Now, the first thing we're going to do is actually create the photos table. Remember, my application doesn't have a photos table. So, ye migrate allows us to create tables very easily. So run the command, I'll put it in the description, and then you start inserting all the different columns. So as the documentation you saw earlier, we have a user ID table and a source uh, column, user ID column. So users, and that's the photos um, table. So you migrate, uh, run the command, and it will actually generate this uh, new table. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is create the model. So um, let's refer to the uh, E2 documentation. You can find it on the E website. Basically, we're going to use a re relational data to set up our model. All right, so what we'll be doing is go to GI and go to the model generator and basically what you do is just insert the name of the table that we just created in the migration uh, this would be uh, photos and the model class is no surprise photos capital just generate that now pop into the back end uh, to your code and you'll probably see a brand new model under models called photos Okay, so now that you've got photos, you can, uh, it's a very simple class. It's some rules, a table name, and the labels. You actually don't have to do anything here. Our next step will be um, actually setting this up with a relation for users because photos has many, uh, sorry, user has many photos. So I've already gone ahead and done this coding. As I said, I messed up. I didn't record it previously. Uh, okay, so I'm just populating my backend data with some dummy data so that it can actually show. So right now I'm just inserting photos. So I'm just putting in the user ID, which I have two users, ID 1 and ID 4, and putting in a dummy path inside called path. 
and pressing the go button. So I usually use PHP my admin. Okay, so I'm inserting the data. Um, usually I use MySQL at the back end or MariaDB to write all this stuff in there. And I'm just going to create a. Um, actually, we don't really need a photos controller because we're actually going to get it to the users. But in case you need to do that, you can always create a photos controller. For this purpose, I'm not going to use the uh, controller generator. Okay, so after con creating a controller, you're going to create the view, right? MVC. And in the view, what I'm going to do is just find all models of user, meaning that I'm just finding all users. Of course, you can add more criteria to this. And I'm just going to load the, rend the models into the render. So this is pretty standard E2 um, code. This will make it appear inside the view. I'm also going to create a view file called list. So you can see action list means view list. Um, again, I did the coding first, but I didn't have a chance to uh, show you guys. So I'm just going to go through. This is what it looks like. Just a simple um, diff with a for each looping through the models and displaying it with a H4. Now below there, I have models get one photo. Previously, what I did was had the code actually sitting out there where it would render a photo. And I decided to actually put that code inside the model and clean it up. So when you finish this, you get all this uh, stuff when you go print R model so that you know that you actually loaded the model. Now, the next step after this is to get the photos of the model. So I got the users, but I need to get one more step, which is get one photo. So to do this, you know that you, uh, photos are related to users and I'm just basically going to run a uh, relation. If you look at the uh, code that he has done, um, they try to do the uh, SQL queries actually in the view. What we're going to do is use the relation, power it by um, the user model and actually load it up. So here what's happened is that I have run get photos behind and this will actually give us the SRC or source. So you saw that that I previously added it in, in the uh, table. And then the, b the front part is the name of the user and the back part is the uh, source. Oh, that's actually just a column or a string. Um, now what I'm going to do right is try to load that and show you guys that it can actually be an image. The way I'm going to do this is I'm just copied uh, two images inside um, the from the web and I've added it into the folder and I put it into the web folder and you can see below here he's actually displaying the views and that's actually raw uh, HTML where he's just uh, done some sort of echoes of uh, the variable um, this is not a very good idea in terms of coding use what you have rule number three and uh, Yitu has this wonderful function uh, component called HTML component. And using that, you can just display an image tag without rendering a si writing a single line of HTML. So the bottom part, right, you see um, he's mixing HTML with um, the um, question mark PHP. Uh, echo. That's not the best way of doing it. I prefer to use the HTML. It's a lot cleaner. And what I'm going to do is simply put that inside the um, photo model. So you saw previously I had get photos. Then I'm going to use get one photo. So you can put all your code inside there and leave the um, uh, the, all the rendering of HTML uh, separately without touching it in the view. So you just run that command out there and I'll show you what happened. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, um, in his brief, he r sends a random image, a random photo. So I'm just running uh, array ran, which will get me a random key and just inserting inside uh, the code. It, now if PHP 8, you can see that question mark dash arrow. Now we don't have that. I'm using PHP 7 here on my local. 
Uh, I'm, here I'm running the component HTML, which I was telling you about, that handles all the tags in HTML. So when you do E2, you don't even have to look at HTML. Again, keep it simple, silly. Don't mix um, as much as you can HTML with uh, PHP. So here I have a gap between the two. I've added uh, divs to separate um, the two users with each other. And the next step, I guess, is that I'll just have to get my images loaded up. Uh, that would require me to go into the back end, edit the pathing, and actually use the real pathing of the images. So uh, I've just got the inspect tool to make sure that they're actually appearing in the corner. Uh, and I've got the right, like as long as you're showing down the tags. And what I'm going to do now, right, is just find some of my pictures <laughs> of Colonel Mustang. And we're going to put them in there. Um, and what I'm doing, I'm just, um, we're now going to use the model. We're going to use that uh, function that we put inside the photos model. And as you can see, right, this is how simple my code is. You're not seeing very many tags up here. We're looping through. Uh, we've got the model name and we get one photo, all of that being handled by the model. Okay, so what's the result? First, I followed the three philosophies. One, I've used uh, keep it simple silly. So all my coding is in my model class. Uh, I have used the less is more. So you can see all my code, even in the view, it's very thin. We don't see any SQL there. And finally, we have used uh, use what we have first. So all of this, I've not used a single plugin from anywhere else. And that's basically the difference. You can see my code is nicely um, arranged all in the model, very heavy model, then some in the controller and the view much, much lighter, only running one single function there to display the photos. There's not much mix of logic inside the view. And this is essentially how you can code like a pro uh, and you can keep improving your style so that you can actually build PHP that looks very easy to maintain uh, and very easy to scale up on there. Okay, so that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.